We're firing up the Pentium 133 that I restored about a year ago. Today we're going to go through my top 10 favorite games from the 1990s. Let's just listen to those wonderful nostalgic sounds as the computer starts up. All right, first I'll go through some honorable mentions. These are still some of my all-time favorite games, such as Half-Life from 1998 or StarCraft, also from 1998. In fact, at the last Retro Land party that we held, we had quite the StarCraft battle that was a lot of fun. Uh, games like Dark Forces from 1995, a fantastic game, as well as its sequel from 1997, Jedi Knight. Uh, games, of course, like Doom. There's a lot on my favorites list, but here's the top 10. In the number 10 spot is Heretic. Released in 1994 by Raven Software, Heretic used the Doom engine. In fact, the producer was none other than John Romero, one of the lead creators of Doom. Heretic featured a number of great upgrades to the Doom engine, including the ability to cast spells. This one was one of my favorites. Look, they're chickens. You can turn them into chickens. Ah, they're pecking at me. Ah. Overall, I find it to be an incredibly fun game. I actually like it better than Doom and still enjoy playing it today. In the number nine spot, Blood from 1997 by Monolith Productions. Just a fantastic game. Blood utilizes the build engine by Ken Silverman, which is the same engine that Duke Nukem used. Blood's a great game for fans of the horror or zombie genre of films or games. It's just a fun game overall. Blood featured a bunch of fun weapons, including the voodoo doll, old-fashioned dynamite, as well as an improvised flamethrower. In the number eight spot, Shadow Warrior. <laughs> you no mess with Lo Wang. Released in 1997 by one of my favorite companies, 3D Realms, Shadow Warrior was made before comedy was destroyed. Oh, want to some Wang? Zilla sends his regards to Wang. <laughs> you no mess with Lo Wang. You're probably noticing a theme here with the first person shooters, at least for these oh. first three. In Shadow Warrior, you play a samurai oh, look, you're coming apart. who goes around slicing enemies and making witty comments along you're the way. In the number seven spot, LucasArts TIE Fighter. Released in 1994, this game was ahead of its time. It put you in the cockpit of an Imperial TIE Fighter and sent you on challenging missions to go destroy those rebel scum. There's nothing like playing it on original hardware. Here I am playing it on my Pentium 133. Although even this computer was a bit too new for it and took me a minute to get it to work, I actually had to start it with a boot disk. But thankfully you don't have to go to those extremes. It was re-released in 2015 called TIE Fighter Special Edition, and thankfully they kept the same nostalgic feel and just upgraded the graphics and compatibility. I remember an 11 year old me getting this game when it first came out and being absolutely amazed by it and just captivated for hours. Number six on the list is a game that's very underrated in my opinion. Strife. Released in 1996 by Rogue Entertainment, Strife is actually a role-playing game and a first-person shooter. The game uses the Doom engine, but is unique in a number of ways, including the ability to talk to characters that you encounter throughout the game. In a small world, word travels fast. I hear you just removed some obstacles from your path. Nice work. Are you interested in some more lucrative projects? Those characters send you on various missions that you can either choose to accept or not. Strife features the ability to accomplish some of your missions stealthily without actually engaging with the enemies, which was pretty unique for the time. You play the part of a resistance member who's going up against an organization known as the Order. It's very fun. 
The game does have a cult following and is kept alive by the fan base who have actually released newer versions of it in recent years. Number five on the list, Red Alert. Construction complete. Released in 1996 by Westwood Studios, Reporting. which would later be acquired by Electronic Arts, Red Alert was the second in the Command & Conquer series. Just like its predecessor, Red Alert had multiplayer capabilities. Affirmative. Red Alert allowed you to play either as the Soviets or the Allies. Very well. Yeah, it featured a number of very fun new weapons, including my favorite, the Tesla Coil. Unit lost. Unit lost. Training. Unit ready. Training. And it featured everyone's favorite character, Tanya, the commando. Let's rock. Let's rock. I'm playing the remastered version right now, which oh, was released in 2020. It allows you to switch between the retro mode or new updated graphics. Affirmative. Acknowledged. The number four spot belongs to Full Throttle. Released in 1995 by LucasArts, this was one of many fantastic point-and-click adventures that the company released in the 90s. In Full Throttle, you play the character of Ben, who's the leader of a motorcycle club who's out to clear the name of him and his gang from evildoers who have framed him for murder. It features very rich story and wonderful cutscenes. You know what might look better on your nose? What? The bar. I was 12 years old when this game came out. I loved it so much I actually wrote a sequel to it. I remember sending the facts of the sequel script to LucasArts and actually hearing from their lawyer saying stop sending us unsolicited messages. <laughs> I wanted to make games like this and I remember running up about a $250 phone bill to the programmers at LucasArts just picking their brains and bugging them. They were all good sports about it. I think they enjoyed hearing from a kid that was a fan. Just as in other point-and-click adventures, in Full Throttle you pick up items, use them later, solve different puzzles. The creator of Full Throttle, Tim Schafer, started his own company, Double Fine Productions, after LucasArts closed their doors. A few years back, his company re-released Full Throttle with updated graphics and sounds. Ah, Diablo. You knew which game it was from the first note. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. This absolute masterpiece of a game from 1996 by Blizzard Entertainment is tied for the number three spot along with its sequel, Diablo 2 from 2000. In 2021, Blizzard released Diablo 2 Resurrected. It's the same great game as the original Diablo 2, except it has fantastic new graphics and sounds. In the past nearly 30 years since it's been released, I don't think a single year has gone by where I haven't played it at least a little bit. In the number two spot is Duke Nukem 3D. Although despite it being number two, I've played it more than any other game on this list. Let's just take a moment to watch this great game as Duke kicks ass and chews bubblegum. And he's all out of gum. All right, that's enough of my terrible Duke impression. Some notes about Duke Nukem 3D, the game uses the build engine which was also used for Shadow Warrior and Blood, which are also on my top 10 list. It was programmed by Ken Silverman who was only 19 years old when the game was being produced. 
In fact, he was even younger than that when he started making the engine. One of the best decisions 3D Realms made was to include the tools that Ken designed to make the game on the game CD. This created a whole community of modders, myself being one of them, that created total conversions or TCs of Duke Nukem. The TC that I created in 2002 was called Quest for Al-Qaeda, The Hunt for Bin Laden, and received over 2 million downloads that year. Duke Nukem definitely had a profound impact on my life, and I've played it more than any other game, but it doesn't hold the number one spot. That honor goes to a 1992 point-and-click adventure by Hal Barwood and LucasArts, whose story and gameplay is unmatched to this day in my opinion. Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. The game was filled with challenging puzzles, interesting characters, and beautifully hand-drawn environments. It had a thoroughly enjoyable story on your quest to find the lost city of Atlantis. In my opinion, it was the last truly great addition to the Indiana Jones universe. Because let's face it, the last two films just did not live up to the name. Well, I hope you enjoyed my top 10 countdown. I've got plenty of other retro gaming and retro computing videos, so please like, subscribe, and share.